Hey, it's Tom here and welcome back to the channel. So uh, one of my favorite books that I've ever read on investing, which I actually don't think I've really ever talked about on the channel that much, uh, is this one from Joel Greenblatt, You Can Be a Stock Market Genius. It is a, a very cheesy title, but it covers um, basically special situation investing, things like spin-offs, mergers, bankruptcies, uh, restructurings, write -off, rights offerings, uh, long-term options, a whole kind of range of special situation type investing approaches and uh, these are the types of strategies that actually actually allowed Joel Greenblatt and his original investment partnership to crank out some of the best returns that frankly I've ever seen. I think his track record uh, when he closed up that partnership was around 50% per year. Uh, admittedly, uh, Joel Greenblatt was kind of constantly giving capital back to his investors to try and keep the fund small and make sure he could still have access to a lot of these generally smaller special situation type opportunities. But it's a really interesting book. And one of the businesses that I've actually been doing a little bit of work on recently, uh, and kind of the more work I do on it, the more I realize I'm probably about 12 months late to the party, and I don't think I'm going to invest in this business, but um, I think it's a really interesting case study, is actually Curate Retail. It's a business that went through a very interesting special situation uh, almost 12 months ago to the day as I'm recording this video. Um, it's one that I've heard Bill Brewster on the Value After Hours podcast with Toby Carlisle talk about pretty extensively. And although I don't really see myself investing in Curate Retail at this point, being probably 12 months late to the party, I think it is a really interesting case study and a really interesting application of some of the ideas in this book. So that is going to be the topic of today's video. I want to walk through kind of what happened with Curate Retail. Um, it's a classic Joel Greenblatt, like super boring and overlooked business, but um, one where people were able to make a lot of money and make really substantial returns. So uh, that is the topic for today's video. Before we get into that, we do actually have a sponsor for today's video, and today's sponsor is ShareSite. Now, there are very few uh, investing platforms that I actually use to kind of manage my investments. Um, I have a couple of brokers that I use for uh, one in the US and one for New Zealand and Australia. Uh, and the other only platform really that I use extensively is ShareSite. <laughs> ShareSite is basically the tool that I use to track my portfolio. Uh, I invest from New Zealand, but I invest internationally. So it allows me to track uh, any currency fluctuations. So as foreign exchange rates move around with, for example, the US dollar against the New Zealand dollar. I can track the impact of that on my portfolio. I can also track uh, capital gains or losses, and I can also track dividend income as well. And although that's one of the main things I use ShareSite for, the other thing that I also use it for is to make tax time much simpler for myself. So ShareSite runs a range of reports, uh, a couple of which are tax focused. Uh, so I can literally just run a couple of reports out of ShareSite, give them to my accountant, and um, it really takes a lot of the pain out of tax time with kind of my share market investments. So ShareSite is fantastic. I really can't say enough good stuff about it. Uh, you can actually use a free version of ShareSite forever for as long as you want to. Um, and I will leave a link down in the description to that, which is ShareSite.com forward slash investing with Tom. Um, if you want to get some of the more advanced tax reporting and also some of the um, better reporting around your portfolio performance, then uh, I would recommend kind of bumping up to one of the paid platforms if that's something you're interested in. Again, if you use the link down in the description below, ShareSite.com forward slash investing with Tom. Uh, if you use that link and sign up for one of the premium subscriptions with ShareSite, that link will actually get you four months free off of an annual subscription. Okay, so firstly, what is Curate Retail and what is the special situation that happened and how this thing kind of play out? Well, uh, Curate Retail owns a few different brands. Basically, they are uh, consumer focused kind of shopping businesses, retail businesses, as the name suggests. And their main one is by far and away QVC. So uh, many of you will probably be familiar with QVC from seeing the infomercials, you know, on TV. Uh, and QVC is really not a growing business. It's a company that produces a good amount of free cash flow. And it's kind of uh, became sort of a special situation and an interesting opportunity for value investors uh, for the reasons I will get into in a sec. But it's also interesting because it has some great capital allocators at the helm. It has a controlling shareholder in the cable cowboy, John Malone. And John Malone has made himself a billionaire through these types of special situations and buying uh, really sort of free cash flow generative businesses and then doing uh, kind of interesting bits of, I guess, financial engineering to increase the returns for himself as oftentimes a controlling shareholder in these businesses. 
And Curate is really interesting because in sort of 2018, 2019, uh, they'd actually gone through quite a significant share buyback program. And if you look at the stock throughout that time, uh, the stock price really hadn't responded at all to those share buybacks. So uh, they did basically put the share buybacks on hold for a period of time, and then they essentially looked at doing some other options. So this sort of special situation opportunity uh, after the buybacks not really having that much of an effect on growing the share price basically uh, for Curate Retail uh, is that they announced basically a two-part dividend in around August 2020. And typically dividend announcements are not all that exciting, um, but with this particular announcement from Curate, it was uh, a really interesting one. So the dividend was basically split into two parts. The first was just a straight up cash dividend, a special dividend of about $1.50 per share. So Keep in mind at this time, Curate is trading for just a fraction over about $10 per share. Uh, so you're getting about 15% of your capital back from that big special dividend. And uh, they also announced a second part of this kind of special dividend, which was actually to issue about $3 per share in preferred stock, which would uh, trade publicly and it would trade sort of separately to uh, the main Curate Class A shares. So if you add those things together very simply, you've got $1.50 from a special dividend, you've got another $3 from a preferred from a preferred stock, and that preferred stock is actually uh, going to pay an 8% dividend for about the next decade um, before it becomes redeemable. Um, so if you add those two together, you're getting $4.50 kind of back as a shareholder on a $10 stock. So you're suddenly getting 45% of your capital back straight out the gate. And then what becomes really interesting is actually what you are left with after after that transaction. And I'll give a shout out to a couple of resources here. So Bill Brewster himself actually has a really good write up on his website, which I'll leave linked down in the description below on this whole transaction. Uh, there's also a uh, second resource I'll point you towards, which is a write up by a user called Mustang on the Value Investors Club, who basically did a write up on the situation just before it took place. So um, using some of the numbers from that write up on the Value Investors Club, this is basically uh, the theoretical sort of before and after stats in terms of the transaction. So at the time before the transaction, like I say, the share price was around $10 per share, slightly above $10 per share, um, and they were effectively going to pay out about $4.50. So uh, if you run that maths, you end up with a share price, uh, theoretically at least post-transaction, of a little under $6 per share, about $5.78 per share. Um, but there's a couple of key differences. So the first major difference is the stock that you're going to be left with is going to be highly leveraged. Even before this transaction, uh, Curate had an enterprise value of about 10 billion US dollars and a market cap of about 4 billion US dollars. So that um, gives you roughly sort of 6 billion in debt and preferred stock and other things um, to give you sort of that differential between the market cap and the enterprise value. And that gap was about to grow much, much wider. <laughs> So as the market cap got down to about $2.5 billion, assuming that the enterprise value stays the same, uh, you now have a enterprise value of still about $10 billion. You have a market cap of about $2.4 billion, which means you're basically about three quarters leveraged. So imagine going and buying a million dollar home. It's kind of like putting $250,000 down on that home and borrowing the additional kind of $750,000 uh, from the bank. So any returns that you do get in that equity are going to be uh, really highly leveraged. So if there is any sort of growth in that enterprise value or any sort of multiple expansion uh, or on the other side of the coin, if there's any sort of multiple, multiple compression or the enterprise value goes down, uh, the equity, the stock that you're left with after after these special dividends are paid out are going to have their returns either up or down really highly amplified by that leverage. But the thing is with this special situation, uh, you're clearly gonna get 45% of your money back kind of in this first instance if you'd just invested in Curate right before these special dividends were gonna get paid out. Um, and what you were left with was yes, a very highly leveraged stock, um, but it was exceptionally cheap on sort of a price to earnings or a price to free cash flow type basis. So um, I'll put some numbers up on the screen here. This is coming out of uh, ticker.com if you're just wondering where that is. I occasionally get questions on where I pull uh, some of these graphs from. 
And uh, at the time, um, Curate after the transaction ended up trading at about uh, a little over five times on sort of an enterprise value to EBIT basis. So if you account for all the debt and stuff and preferred stock that, that Curate now has, it was trading at about five times EBIT. Um, but on a sort of market cap basis, on a price to free cash flow basis, it was trading at a little over two times free cash flow. So um, yes, there's a lot of leverage built in and that comes with its own set of risks, but it was trading at a very, very cheap multiple. And this really is like a classic Joel Greenblatt type move. Um, Curate is not a, what most people would describe as a great business. It's not a growing business with huge returns on equity and so on. Um, it has modest returns on capital, obviously amplified by some of the debt that they have. There's a lot of sort of movement towards things like online shopping and you know just buying stuff on, on Amazon as opposed to watching infomercials on TV and buying stuff off TV. But um, QVC does have a lot of very loyal customers and um, their kind of key customer segment is really heavily skewed towards um, basically middle-aged and older women shopping for often like household items and that sort of stuff. And uh, the thesis here, if you're a kind of a bull case investor in this particular situation is that those types of investors are not the kind of quickest ones to change their buying habits. If you were to compare them to say a 15 or 20 year old person who basically just buys everything online and, and is much less likely to buy stuff off QVC. And assuming that Curate continues to return capital to shareholders in some way, whether that be through continued dividends or whether that even be through just paying down debt, decreasing the leverage, which is sort of still a lot of people would view that as sort of accretive to the equity. You know, just like if you had that million dollar home where you put $250,000 down, um, if you pay off some of that $750,000 loan, your equity in that deal basically increases. And that's how a lot of people view uh, Curate basically paying down debt as well. So regardless of how the capital is returned to you kind of moving forward after this situation, you really only have to be right, I guess, on the business for quite a short period of time. It's not tr it's not like you're paying 30 or 40 times earnings for this business and it has to grow for a very long time for that to make sense. You're paying two times earnings or three times earnings. So if uh, Curate even has shrinking free cash flow out into the future, assuming it just doesn't evaporate after a couple of years, uh, this could still be something that really does make sense to a lot of investors. And if we now fast forward um, pretty much almost exactly 12 months after this special situation took place, um, there actually has been some multiple expansion and some debt repayment from Curate slash QBC. But since there's leverage built into this situation, the price to free cash flow or the sort of expansion in the market cap as well has uh, grown a little more. So the price to free cash flow has gone from 2.3 times to 4.8 times, uh, which is about 110% increase. The free cash flow has come down just slightly. So the actual stock hasn't gone up about 110%, but I'll put the exact kind of change in stock price up on the screen here. So that's it for this video. Uh, like I said, I've been doing a little bit of work on this particular situation. I'm a bit late to the party and I really don't see myself investing in it at this point, but um, it is pretty cool in my books to see, I guess some of the practical application of those types of lessons that Joel Greenblatt wrote about over 20 years ago now, uh, and you can be a stock market genius, the world's uh, cheesiest title for an investing book, but um, the content in that book is, is actually very good. So um, I do hope you enjoyed that story. And um, if you've come across any of these other special situations before, I'd also be interested to hear that down in the comments below. This is really a type of investment strategy that I've read about a little bit, but I've never made a lot of investments in these types of special situations, but it's certainly something that I'm open to doing moving forward. And like I say, if you're interested in checking out ShareSite, you'll need to go to the link sharesite.com forward slash investing with Tom. But that's it for me for this one, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.